Right, hello, uh, hi and welcome to our video. This is a part one of a tutorial for a custom controller we're making. Um, okay, uh, you'll have to excuse the video. There's gonna be loads of jump cuts because we've got bits and pieces coming in and out. So um, yeah, there may be, you may notice some jump cuts here and there. My hands might move uh, in different places, but don't worry about that. Just keep watching, it's all good. Uh, this has been uh, three years in the making. Um, so we're finally excited to bring this to you now. Um, so this is a custom controller. Basically, you can use whatever you want. Um, it can be we're, we're choosing rifles at the moment. This is why we've got a rifle in front of us. Um, but you can put it in whatever you want at all. It's entirely up to you. Um, so the prototype we used. If you haven't seen the video of the prototype, please check the description below. Um, we'll bring it into shot. This is the Nerf gun that we chose to use for our prototype. Um, Okay, we chose the, this Nerf gun uh, basically for the size. Uh, we had to modify it slightly because as you can see, we have the analog stick at the front. So we had to print a new piece, 3D printed that piece there. Um, and also buttons on the side, which you'll see in the video if you watch it. Um, we also, it needs to be wide enough for the buttons to be opposite each other. Um, again, this is something we need to consider. Uh, we also have the reload button on the bottom and we have a look down the site on the back as well so all these things you need to consider when choosing what uh, f what you're going to fit your controller into so that was our prototype and what we've decided to do this time is use this gun here which is a just a basically a BB gun an airsoft rifle that we've chosen um, what it actually looks like is this hopefully you can see so this is just a, a fairly cheap um, rifle that we managed to buy on the internet um, anyone can buy it it comes in orange and parts of it in orange so what we've done is very quickly sprayed it um, as you can see some of it is orange but we've given it a quick spray job very quick you can use any sort of cheap paint that you can buy in any retailer okay so why did we choose this rifle there's a few things to consider with the rifle uh, firstly you want it fairly light but bulky you want to be able to hold it decently um, space for buttons and whatever modifications you choose to do um, this is, like I say, a nice cheap um, airsoft rifle, but also comes with a stock, a shoulder stock. You need to think about the shoulder stock. If you're going to have like a look down the sight button, uh, the button will be on the back here and it will push into your shoulder for the look down the sight. That's an option that you can do if you choose to do so. Obviously consider having a decent stock um, that will work with it. The uh, foregrip on the front, it needs to be wide enough to hold buttons. Um, obviously you're going to be holding your hands here. So you're going to have buttons and there'll be a diff there's different buttons that I'll show you in a moment that you'll be putting there, a bit like the Nerf gun and also on this side an analog stick. So if I show you an analog stick quickly, the uh, analog stick looks like this. Um, as you can see it's quite wide so you need to consider um, depth and also if you're fitting analog sticks to the full grip, um, consider the fact that if a buttons are on the other side you need to be able to have enough room. So that's all things to consider when choosing a rifle. So there's a little example of the analog stick that you'll be using. So that's that. Um, magazine. Uh, if you want to have the reload on the magazine, it's quite a cool feature that we, that we did uh, feature on the Nerf gun. Obviously have a magazine or at least something on the gun that you decide to choose to use um, so that you can have that feature as well. So that's that. Um, on this particular model, uh, we've 3D printed a little switch. Um, what we were using before on the Nerf gun, we had a, we had a switch on the back, um, which is, which I'll show you here. My trusty assistant has just given it to me. So we had the switch on the back, which fitted into the shoulder, which was great, great, but it's not exactly safe. It's not particularly comfortable. Um, so this was the kind of switch that we were using before. But what we've done in this, uh, what we're going to use on this gun is we've 3D printed very quickly, just a very small, um, piece of plastic that's going to fit in the stock inside and then that will be mounted um, onto a switch inside very simple to do um, and all this can be uh, if you contact us this can be uh, if you decide to use this exact model then we may be able to print this for you so that's another option for you but yeah that's just gonna make it a bit neater a bit more comfortable when you're using it so that's something to think about okay so analog sticks then why do we choose this rifle well it has a wide four grip um, and as you can see, the analog stick will probably be placed here on this particular model. Um, very similar to what we did on the prototype, as you can see on the Nerf gun we used. We 3D printed an extra part 
and had the analog stick at the front there, but it doesn't have to go there. If you check the video description below, you'll see our um, very first prototype about three years ago, and we had a similar rifle to this, not the same, and it had a very small um, PSP style analog stick right down here. So you could use it with your thumb, if that makes sense, finger on the trigger, use it with your thumb. So the options are endless. You can use whatever you want. Um, like I say, there are different analog sticks to use. You don't have to have a larger one. This is a PS3 analog stick style. You can use 360, you can have PSP. There are many, many different options available on the internet. Um, so that's that. Again, with buttons, on the Nerf gun, we used uh, the larger button here that you can see, which is quite comfortable on the finger. Um, as you can see, it's quite small, not too deep. Um, and that will fit again on the other side of the foregrip. So we will have buttons along there. This one's slightly smaller than the Nerf. So we may use smaller buttons and there's many options. So there's that one. You have smaller buttons, very, very small, but very comfortable. Get your finger quite close to it. Um, it sticks, protrudes a little bit, but you can fit it differently. So that's not too bad. Very small at the back. Um, and because they're small, you have them close together. So obviously you'll put them wherever fits nice with your hand. So that's that button. You can have the same style button again, but with a, with a shorter, shorter shaft. So it doesn't protrude quite so much. Again, same on the back. So that's an option. And then you have the larger buttons. This one isn't clicky. So um, this is just a push in button. But again, this can be used for your reload and your shoulder as well as your, the, your finger buttons for, you know, grenades and all that sort of thing, whatever you're using it for. Again, obviously this is all custom controller. So you customize the buttons using however you want it. Okay, so next part then, once you've decided on your rifle and you've customized it and you've painted it and you've done everything you want to do to it, we need to start deciding about where we're going to put our buttons. So if I grab hold of the foregrip and the rifle, obviously fit this on. Okay, so where are we going to put our buttons? Obviously you can put it wherever you like, but naturally just grab what I'm going to do on this one is grab hold of the rifle like I would. Where my hand sits is where my buttons are going to be. So where you're hold it comfortably in the most comfortable place that you can um, where your thumb sits is going to be where your um, analog stick is going to go so what we're going to do is just going to mark mark out the uh, position on the gun just like so so that's about where my thumb would be and then turn it over again where the, where my fingers sit I'm just going to mark quite difficult to do one-handed but just naturally where your hand's gonna be, hold the gun nice and steady, and then just sort of mark out where you would like your buttons to go. And that gives you a rough idea of where you're gonna go. Obviously play around with it, hold it, um, put it up against your shoulder, put your hands in different positions, get as comfortable as you can, and then mark out where you're gonna go um, and where you're gonna put your buttons. Okay. Okay, so now I've marked the four buttons there in a nice comfortable position. You've got your analog stick on this side and you've got your four buttons there. You can put um, other buttons wherever you like. So if you wanted another row underneath, a little bit like we did on the Nerf gun, which I'll show you. Um, as you can see on the prototype Nerf gun here, we had the row of four like I just showed you, but again, another row underneath. Um, but you've got options anywhere. You can put um, buttons possibly by your trigger. Maybe you could have like um, that for your melee attack or your grenade throw, you know, just nice, quick, easy buttons. Your thumbs right on there, um, nice and easy uh, to use. Again, on this rifle, you've got the trigger. There's, you can have buttons on the, like I showed on the Nerf gun, on the uh, handle here. You've got, on this particular model, you've got a stop, so you can utilize that as a switch if you wanted to. Um, you could have your trigger, you can have a button behind your trigger if you could put your finger in, or you could pull your trigger. On the very first one we had, um, you pull the trigger to, to fire, and then you pulled it right back to change weapons, so that's an option. Options are endless, it's entirely up to you. Whatever you want to do, you can do. Um, <clears throat> okay, right, so next stage, we're gonna drill our holes for our buttons. So you've grabbed the rifle, you've put your hands in a nice comfortable position, um, and you've marked out where you want your buttons to go. So what I've chosen to do is analog stick on my thumb. I've got uh, two rows of four for my fingers there. I've got two buttons on the handle, um, and then I've chosen to put one underneath the trigger. So that could be for example, like a weapon change or whatever you decide to do. So that's where I'm gonna put my buttons. Okay, so that, now we need to drill drill the holes. So grab our trusty drill. And we're gonna, I'm gonna use a center punch. You don't have to, but it's just easier. So I'm just gonna center punch the center of the hole. 
just like so. Just easier for the drill so you don't make any slips. And then we're gonna go on the front as well. Mark out everywhere we've marked our button. Okay, so that's done, and then we're gonna start drilling. So here we go. Okay, so that's those done. And obviously now we need to do the big one, the analog stick at the front. This obviously, you need a bigger hole for this. Again, depending on what an, on an analog stick you use, make sure you've got the right size drill bit. If you use a little PSP one, obviously it's smaller. Okay, so what I've done on this step drill is marked the different positions. Um, obviously it might be an idea for you to do that as well when you've measured it. And then we're going to go down and drill the hole for the analog stick. Okay, it's going to take the front off just to make sure I got enough clearance. And also, what, obviously what you're doing here is making sure your hole is going to be big enough for whatever analog stick you've chosen to be able to go through. Okay, so obviously we've got a little bit of room to go, right? So whatever analog stick you've chosen to use, it needs to go through the hole, but the rest of it doesn't, obviously. So I'm going to go another stage. Try not to drill through my fingers. Okay, I'm going to check, keep checking. Make sure you got the right size, so I need to go a bit more. Down again. Okay, and another go. I reckon that's gonna be all right. And there you have it. So if you can see, that's gone through. You might need a little bit of adjustment because it's a little bit tight, but that'll be perfect, okay? Okay, so now we've got all our holes drilled we've got the hole drilled for the analog stick we've done the holes in the handle all ready for buttons your eight buttons along here where your finger's going to go there already now we need to place the buttons so on this particular rifle i've got to take the front off and uh, i've got to cut a little bit out so i'm going to start doing that now And there we have it. Okay, so now that bit's removed. As you can see, we've got a nice open space here for the buttons that we're gonna be using. And then we'll slide our piece back on. And as you can see, that hole's covered and we're all ready to go. Okay, so, that's all. so now we're gonna open the gun up and place the buttons, so here we go. open rifle.
Okay. Right, let's get to mounting these buttons then. So, the buttons I'm going to be using are these ones here. You only need two of the four prongs, so you can bend those two out of the way if you want to, use them for the anchor points uh, for the glue, um, or they can be cut off entirely up to you. But on this particular button, um, we're only going to be using one side of the, of the, of the prongs. Okay. So I'm going to bend two out of the way just so I can hold it. I'm going to be using uh, hot glue at the moment. It's just so I can um, get everything central, get it in place. It's totally fine to use. Obviously, once you've got it all in the right place and you're happy, you can use proper glue to hold these buttons in. But I'm just going to be using hot glue at the moment just to get everything centralized so I'm happy with where, where it all is. So place the button. And then I'm going to flip it round just to make sure it's in the centre because you don't want it rubbing or anywhere. So we're just going to get it in the centre. Okay, so now you can see we've got all the buttons in place. We've got your eight buttons at the front here, um, all in. We've gone for the reload on the magazine. So as you can see, we have a button uh, fitted there. We have the trigger button all ready to go. As you can see, pull the trigger and the button clicks. And then we've also gone for the aim down the sights down here on the shoulder, which I will just bring a bit closer. There we go. So we've got a button mounted there. That's going to be rain down the sides. Um, so now what we're going to do is go on to the soldering part. Um, that will be explained more in part two, but I'm going to carry on and solder now um, and it's probably going to be sped up. Okay, so there we go, there's all the buttons wired up. Um, now we're gonna put it all back together and uh, have a play, so here we go.